Welcome back, dear friends. Well, I have cut about two hours of video from the start of this video because I have discovered that the person sensor doesn't actually track faces. I think, in all fairness, it can do the face recognition because I've seen a couple of projects people have posted on the internet that seem to work. But it really doesn't work with um, tracking faces and things. Most disappointing, but let's rejoin the video about an hour in. I have to say I'm really disappointed because I've continued doing lots of in-depth research right down to wearing a hat just in case it didn't like bald heads and putting different sorts of illumination and shining the light directly at me, lights on, lights off, all this stuff using the original, as I said, the original um, sketch example that came along with from the GitHub page that was developed for it and it just doesn't make any sense. Apologies if the sound's odd but I'm in the kitchen which is echoey. What I'm doing, I just wanted to show you what actually happens. Forget the little X that's floating around because that's some experiment I'm doing. The block of whatever it is, dots, full stops, indicates the position and size, the box that the person sensor thinks should go around my head, where my head is. I will move to the left of the screen, or the left of the room rather, and it's in the centre. I want to move to the right of the room. It moves a bit, but it, it really is still in the centre. If I stand over it and go really high up, so on the right hand side, it just stays sort of in a similar position. If I go down and crouch down, it's still seeing me, you can see it's changing. It doesn't move at all. It's official. I finally decided to stop mucking about with the person sensor because Despite all my efforts to try and trick it into doing something resembling facial tracking, it doesn't. It does not work. So I do apologise for having spent, I think I first saw the video um, before we went on holiday, so sort of June, July time, and ever since then I seem to have been running a one-man advertising campaign for them, inadvertently. They don't work. They're no good. If I, it looks like if you want to do facial recognition, they're OK, but this tacked-on added facial um, tracking does not work. Don't waste your money. I, I have found one I'm hoping does work, which I have now placed an order for yesterday. So fingers crossed, I really want that to come because this is getting very frustrating. So instead of that, I'm going to get on with some nice practical work. So today's jobs wigs and lamps. Poor Victoria. One thing I did do the other day is to sort out finally her cranium because it, it never fixed on properly and it slopped all over the place so I stuck some little bits of plastic around the edge and a locating thing and also two magnets and the equivalent bits in there so she now better. That fits on really well and that's not going to fall off. And I also added some um, lead weight in the front to compensate for the weight of the wig because I want to glue that on there and just have that once and for all done because I'm fed up with it. But as I've said in the past she looks like um, someone from Peaky Blinders with this so I'm, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and just actually take this to pieces and find out what on earth is going on and whether I can extend the side bits down. So I think that's my first job. This is very daunting. I've taken the ribbon off which was a big step and I found the rubber band and I think her hair is actually quite long. These bits I think have come out. So I'm going to remove the rubber band oh dear, and see what we've actually got here. There's an awful lot of hair. Right, I'll untangle things and get back to you. Well, that's not too bad. I've glued it on with hot melt glue because nothing else would stick it. And, yeah, I mean, the forehead's fine. I need to sort of somehow squeeze these bits in. I'm not quite sure how, because it's not real hair, it's synthetic, and obviously the same with the back. But, in terms of huge bald bits up the side, 
that's not too bad I might have to have another look at it later anyway next job drill a hole there and an hole there so I can fix on little prong pipes with the shell lamps they can fold out because obviously having a shell lamp there is not going to illuminate her face so it will need to sort of stick out a bit I've done my calculations and modelled it and I think this is what I need with the mending up that distance which is useful so now I can get on get the holes drilled and get on with it I was wondering how I was going to drill the holes because I can't get this apart without taking everything to pieces and then I thought very handy thing about having all these drawers everywhere you can stick one out rest things on it and it just reaches and I can twist this round brilliant because I want to get, make sure the holes for the pipes are absolutely vertical so having got the holes drilled I started cutting up the copper now this is 8mm diameter copper the holes are 8mm diameter which means it won't push in I've discovered that many times in the past so I tried the first bit, I tried turning down ever so gently because it's so malleable it can suddenly catch on the tool which it did so I ruined several bits of copper and I thought I'd be clever and put a 6.5mm drill bit through the middle, clamp it in the other end of it and use that to support it which worked well until it didn't this is why I always wear safety goggles whilst destroying things on the lathe so I'd got one bit turned up on or turned down on the lathe and in the end with the other bit I just used lots of um, did it for, with a, for ages in the lathe but using abrasive paper, coarse abrasive paper and that worked so that's nice I'm um, just about because obviously that's going to push in there like so look at all oh, that's nice isn't it and I was just thinking well it's going to have one of these fittings at the top wouldn't it be nice if I could find a washer or something, just a little decorative thing. Look what I just found. The first two things I found in the drawer of exciting washer type things. Perfect, two brown, dark brown plastic washers. So I'll drill, drill them out, probably destroy them as well to 8mm. And that'll just look really nice. Lovely. That's better. Aesthetics is everything. It's my watchword. I decided actually that these were too high with that washer so I've drilled the holes a little bit deeper to take the socket on the end of that fitting and that's much better than a lower I know it's only by a matter of sort of um, seven millimeters but what's seven millimeters between friends I think that's that's much better because normally you'd be standing at this sort of height so they're not going to obscure anything there we are Got a load, bought a load of these little cob LED things, which are perfect for this. And there's just room for them and a little resistor. Bob Jonko, I'll get them glued on. I've got these glued on now, the slight angle backwards, so I'll get them glued in. And I've also set the resistance so that they're just the right brightness for running off 12 volts. Here's a quick top tip if you want to feed wire through. Um, some complicated piece of tubing that wire won't go through naturally get some string and a hoover and just put one end of the pipe on the hoover and it will suck the string through and bobs your arm could you put something to tie the wire onto to feed it through a hey, thank you let's switch them on with the 12 voltaires that looks nice that's lovely that's just the right amount of light Excellent, probably looks a bit bright on the camera, but to my mind that does look lovely. It just illuminates her no oops, it just illuminates her nicely. Next job illuminate this nicely with some of those little LED strips, I think, either side of the window. And there's the window, and you're not gonna see that much through there, but at least as she turns her head, when I've got a proper person sensor. Um, you'll see the different sides of it and there's room in here I'm going to put some up there and some up there well that's not too shabby look that's worked out really nicely and I've managed to ferret the wires linking them um, so it actually sort of fits in here because there's not much space around so that's lovely let's talk about the potentially embarrassing subject of connecting things Here's the front cabinet cover from the 
is it time for tea machine and the way that I've wired up the LEDs here is simply to have a length of wire and then somewhere uh, oh, there um, a little plug and sockets to plug them into so that's one way of doing it but it's really fiddly and a pain so the other way of doing it was obviously to have um, long pieces of wire that you just twiddle around and hide somewhere, tuck away. Not happy with that. And I was thinking about different sorts of plugs and what I'd got available and all this. And then I thought, dear friends, I thought copper tape. Da, da, da. I have had this sitting in the drawer for years. I remember buying it thinking, oh, that looks exciting. What I was thinking, because I realised, of course, that with this front panel, there are two fixing points. There's one there, one there. And they are basically two screws sticking out. They're insulated by wood, so they're not connected to anything. Put that on, tighten them down with two donuts. That's what holds it on. And I thought, well, look, if I get a piece of this copper tape and stick it around here and stick it around here, and the equivalent bits here, and I can solder onto it. That is brilliant, it's thin, doesn't sort of add too much sort of packing to this. Put it on, tighten it up, that'll do the connections. And then of course, last night I thought, well, why not do the same with this bit? Because I could have two pieces of tape here, this side, and another two there, that side. Slide it in, tighten it up with the screws, and I've got those two connectors as well. It's ever so exciting. So my first job is to see what this is even like, as you can see, I've never even taken it out of the box, and see whether I can solder onto it. This is really exciting. I didn't think that I was actually going to work, but it's soldered beautifully. It really is copper. Look, it's not coated with anything, and it's really quite low resistance. I'm thrilled. This is really exciting. So I'm going to work out the sort of origami thing shapes that I need to get to where I want to go and then get them stuck on. Wow, that worked really well. Look at that. And I've just soldered the wire on there and on this side, positive and ground. And on these, look at that, it just stuck right around the front. And I made a hole in it, um, just bigger than the screw, or the bolt or whatever it is, so it doesn't actually connect to the screw or bolt, it keeps it insulated. And to do that, I used one of these hole punches, took the bottom off, just sort of made an indentation where the bolt needed to go through, and lined it up in the hole and just punched it out. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. So now I'm going to take this apart and get the positive and, and ground connected up. Oh, so exciting. And it should conduct enough electricity because we're only talking about sort of 20 milliamps or something. It's virtually nothing. Well, that's exciting. I've got all the copper bits on the sides and on these bits all connected up to 12 volts and 0 volts ground. So hopefully it still fits together. I'll get it together screw it together and we'll see what happens. A moment of truth, I've got 12 volts on that. When I switch it on it's going to go through that and then through that and then back to here and hopefully through the LEDs. Are you all ready? My fingers on the button. Three, two, one. Ooh, right. Well those two light up but these ones don't. So why is that? That's better, it was. Just tighten those two. Might need a washer behind them because I don't want to sort of squash it in too much. Oh, but that's lovely. I'm very pleased with that. So now you can finally see all the bits when they're moving inside and her face, which does look lovely. So you can use that copper tape. Two things. One, I can see I let my trickery wires through there. So I've got to do something about that. And the second thing is, there's nothing this side. We can't have a steam pump machine with a huge gap one side. Oh no, so I've got to decide what to put there. I'm still waiting for the new person sensor from a different company to arrive. So, during the meanwhile, I've got the illumination done. I'm thinking about these two windows down here. And I remembered I'd got another three of these amazingly realistic flickering candle effects. Absolutely incredible. Sadly you cannot, I've spent hours searching, but you can't buy just the modules anywhere. 
you need to buy them with these hollow wax candle shapes but the innards pop out very simply so it's just one of those things and what you're left with look that's the bit that holds the batteries which we can replace by wiring it indirectly to the power supply somehow look at that they are just so realistic it's so easy to forget you're not looking at a real candle flame so I was thinking having two of them one either side which I think would look lovely I've got to paint the actual enclosure for it so that the only light you see is the bit on the flickering flame that's no problem but I I think that would look lovely I'm just experimenting to see the height that it would need to be don't want it too high and don't want it too low because most people would probably be standing sort of here when watching us sing so I think that's about right luckily these just are not glued so they can just be pulled apart gently so what you have oops, you have a coil a little, very much like the one I was just talking about in the um, pendulum a big soft yellowy sort of LED that's focused up onto the flame bit and the flame bit just sits on a piece of wire that's sort of bent so it hangs down there and on the bottom you've guessed it there's a little magnet which therefore swings backwards and forwards as the electromagnet is pulsed that just pulls out so that's great that's what's inside this one so I'm going to get all these bits they're quite interesting shapes aren't they that'd be quite a nice steampunk shape thing mm, interesting get all them painted sprayed up black I don't want to see any of that and also the bottom of the flame as well paint all that black so you just get this bit glowing I can't say I'm that impressed with the matte so far hopefully it will go matte here's the remaining one that I haven't used yet from the set of three and I've realised most excitingly that it fits perfectly just within or against or attached to the front panel that's so exciting because also I've got the 12 volt supply so I can now use that to create two four and a half volt supplies for these two look I've made little supports for the two electric candles that's nice that'll be so good if they're all fixed on here I've just painted these with that amazing cast iron paint it is sparkly and it's slightly rough it's absolutely incredible stuff uh, hang on let me show you oh this is rust-oleum cast iron and they rust-oleum do a wide range of these amazingly realistic sort of metallic paints not just shiny they've got a lovely texture to texture to them so I'm waiting for that to dry look it's done this is most enjoyable. I've just been editing the rest of the video and realised that I've said exciting about a million times. Um, this isn't exciting, it is enjoyable. Or challenging, or something else. But you see, look, that one goes to the negative, or 0 volts, that one comes round. We're just sticking it in place with super glue to try and avoid, cover up the reflections, all the views from the windows. It comes round here, you have one resistor, which is 150 ohms and then it goes through the other one again these two are wired in series I think I mentioned that anyway um, four and a half volts each that means I measured the current for each one and it's 0.023 so 23 milliamps if you wire them in series it means that the current will be the same and the voltage will be 9 volts so I need to lose 3 volts 12 take away 3 is 9 Using the wonderful Ohm's law, which is perhaps the only equation I can remember from my time at school, V over IR, want to know the resistance, voltage divided by current, comes out at 130. Isn't that amazing? I do love Ohm's law. The only other equation I can remember is 1 over 2 pi FC, which I can't remember what it's for. But you know when you just keep practising something, revising something even though it's years and years ago I can still remember I think it's something to do with impedance and frequency I've no idea anyway and then it goes back to here now this is most enjoyable because it means I can if I need to get inside I can just remove it and then when I want to put it back together I'll just do that and everything's connected and in the right place it's 12 volts and Ooh. 
car. Oh, those candles. I'm really pleased with that. And it's lovely having the symmetry of it as well. They are amazing, those candles. Sure. You can just about make out the wires and things behind this. I uh, need to have some sort of backing. Obviously, it's not a problem that side, but that. Oh, look. If you're sitting down there, okay, positioned okay. And if you're standing where you normally would to view her singing, they work really nicely. Thanks very much for watching. That's definitely time to stop another video. Um, hope to see you next time. Or remember to click the bell button and like and subscribe and stuff. Um, next time, hopefully, the new person sensor will be here so I can experiment with that a bit more success. So thanks again very much for watching. Hope to see you next time.